Hi, Geneva. Hi, Rita. Hi. Hi. Hi, Les. Here comes Eric. Hi, Eric. Hey. No word from Melissa that she's going to be late. Um, checked, checking my text right now. Okay. Uh, no, I hadn't seen anything. So she should be here any second because she usually lets me know. <clears throat> Gotta look good for TV here. <laughs> <laughs> A little more to the left. I know. <laughs> this is my good side. Or, yeah. <laughs> right. I think you got it, Les. Just a little bit more that way. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> You're on mute. If I didn't straighten it, I'd be looking at it the whole meeting. <laughs> right. and you'd be driving us crazy too. <laughs> so um, thanks everybody for your patience. We'll just wait another minute or two to see if um, Melissa shows up. And we lost Becky too. <laughs> I know. There you are. Okay. Um, Becky, I think I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, and then. Uh, I'll be right back to my post. Okay. All right. Great. Um, so I'm going to call a meeting of the uh, Shootsbury Select Board to order. Today is Wednesday, November 9th, 2022. And we are holding this meeting. Um, remotely via Zoom. Um, so with that, as with every meeting, um, I will go ahead and review the agenda and then we'll um, go right into the meeting. So um, the first order of business is public comment. Um, then we have minutes to review just from one meeting. There are a couple that we're just gonna, that are on the agenda, but we're gonna pass over because they're not um, quite ready yet. Then we have appointments to the, um, Cultural Council and Lake Wyola Dam Study Committee, um, discussion about the right of first refusal for the Greenbaum property and um, hope to get input from other town boards if they are prepared to give it. Um, then we have a Community Compact Best Practices Grant for FY23, um, which is a vote and then town administrator updates. So um, why don't we open with public
public comment. And if you can just use the raise hand feature, just makes it easier for me. So do we have any public comment this evening? No. Okay. Um, all right, so why don't we go ahead and um, do the minutes. So tonight we just have one set of minutes from October 26th. And um, thanks Geneva, I know this is your first whole set of, of minutes. Um, so they were quite um, comprehensive. My, one of my goals when I um, started on the select board and still gonna work on it is to see if we can get the um, minutes down to less than five, five pages, which seems pretty, um, I, you know, I know there's a lot in there and you don't want to err on the side of like too little information, but um, they do get pretty, uh, pretty meaty after a while. So um, I'll, I'll take another look at it. I tried to do this once before and wasn't very successful. And um, I think I'll make another another attempt at it, but it was, uh, they were really great minutes and um, I, I liked very much the way they were organized. So thank you. I know it's, it's a, this is a new task um, for you. So we appreciate all your hard work on it. Um, so are there any comments or questions about the um, October 26 minutes? Well, having said that, I'd like to add something to the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, sure. Um, just uh, number five. I just think we want to say uh, something. I haven't really written on. Let's say the, 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 the so what tweet. number five? Uh, number is, five is on. Let me just look at it. Two, I believe. But it talks about how um, oh, the Lake Wyola Study Committee. The party creates liability issues. It does, but this, I think we also want to add that it cre creates liability and potential dangerous. You know, whatever. I, I want to say it, but. The issue is not just this liability for the town, it's that someone's going to get hurt. Um, right. So I think we should just say that somehow. It doesn't right. matter how it's, we say it. It's a matter of personal safety. Yes. You know, and so personal, just a matter of personal safety and liability, both. So just add something about that in there. Just that yeah, that's I think we could just, part. Yeah. Could we just say that, just like amend it to say that's a matter of personal safety and liability? Sure, that's fine. Okay. That is that, um, that was oh, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's in the second sentence. Uh, it is in the second sentence, yes. Okay. All right, Melissa, you do you have any um, additions? I did not, thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so um, hearing none, uh, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes with that? one amendment to, amendment to the um, Lake Wyola Study Committee. Yes. So moved. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Make peace O'Neill aye. Stalker aye. Farrell aye. And thanks again. Um, Okay, um, we have uh, the appointments that we have to do. We're a little bit ahead of schedule. I see Mateo is here. Um, was anybody, were we having anybody come from the- would be Cara's appointed? here as well. I'm sorry, oh, Cara, okay, hi, Cara. Um, <clears throat> anybody else um, who would be appointed to either the Cultural Council or the Lake Wyola Study Committee? The Lake Wayola, I don't, I don't think anybody's going to come from that because we're, it's, it's happening in the future, but we just want to appoint them. And I have a little spreadsheet, which we can get to eventually, just sort of says who I think they should be. Oh, okay. I don't, think, I don't think they're planning on coming to answer your question. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, um, uh, Cara and Mateo, do you want to just introduce yourselves? And just... Sure. Hi, uh, I'm Kara Brostrom. I um, live in Shrewsbury. I'm getting ready for dinner. <laughs> so I might have my, I might stick around, but have my camera off later. Um, and I'm, uh, I've been on the cultural council since I think 2019. So this would be my second um, confirmation. Thank you. 
And Mateo. Oh, sorry. Um, Mateo Pangallo uh -huh. and uh, lived in Shutesbury for a few years, a number uh, five or six years now. Um, I serve as the chair of the Community Preservation Committee right now, and I'm on the Historical Commission. And my background um, beyond my professional work, I'm a scholar, but I have a prehistory to that in theater and the arts, um, running theater companies, which involved applying for master's level grants, um, and also um, making grants as a staff member of the Essex National Heritage Commission. So yeah, that's my background that I think is relevant to the Cultural Council. Great, thank you. Um, any questions, Eric or Melissa, for either Kara or Mateo? No, I, right. I thank them for doing it. That's, that's yes. the only thing I'd say. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Um, so we'll take these um, nominations uh, separately. Um, Kara, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's Bostrom? Brostrom. Brostrom, okay. Um, I apologize. Uh, so do I hear um, a um, nomination for Kara Brostrom for the Cultural Council? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Make peace, O'Neill, aye. Stalker, aye. Farrell, aye. And um, do I hear a motion to appoint uh, Matteo Pangalo to the Cultural Council? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Make peace, O'Neill, aye. Stalker, aye. Farrell, aye. And again, thank you both for your willingness to, to serve. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the um, Lake Wyola Dam Study Committee. And um, for those of you who um, haven't heard about this or might be interested, um, maybe Eric, can you just give us like a little bit of the background about what what we're doing and how we approached um, finding people. Yeah, well, I think um, the general idea is that there's there's a dam in Lake Wyola, as we all know, and that dam has sort of increasingly become a recreational facility. Um, and I think there's a fear that there's, well, I know there's a fear that there's um, someone will get hurt there um, and, and or the town will, um, have liability issues that relate from that person getting hurt. I, most importantly, that people getting hurt is a real problem. Um, a couple of people I've talked to have also mentioned the fact that like there aren't any bathrooms down there. So I hadn't really thought about that. I hadn't really got into that deep, but that's another issue. Um, anyway, excuse me, I'm losing my hearing here. There's some feedback. I don't know where that's coming from. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where that's coming from. You, can tell. you want everyone to mute? And yeah, why don't we all mute and then that would be good. Um, anyway, um, so the idea is to appoint a study committee to uh, recommend to the select board um, what to do. I mean, what, what kind of rules or regulations should we have there that we don't have now, if any? And uh, there's a secondary issue that is to say, there's no legal access to the dam for the dam keepers, uh, and the dam keeper and the assistant dam keeper or construction crews should we need them. That is to say, there's no, there's no way there. Right now, we are, um, we are allowed to go there by, um, and I'll say their name wrong, it's probably the Z Zavura, is that their last, I think that's their last name. They're very, they're the butters and they're very, uh, kindly let the town go across their land on a routine basis to get to the dam, but that can't go on forever, obviously. So the idea would be to try to see if we can solve that problem either by securing a, um, a an easement or by buying the land or whatever has to be done to make it so that we can just have access to that for that type of thing. Um, so we, we sort of came up with a list of people who, um, do you have that list, Becky? I sent you an email. If you can just send put up on the screen, it's just because we can maybe we can do it on mass. I don't know or not, but um, 
the idea was to try to have a representative uh, group of people on that list, um, abutters in particular, uh, the police chief who has to enforce any kind of rules that we come up with and that exist already, uh, the dam keeper who has to keep the dam, obviously. Um, so that's the idea is to have a, a group of people who, I see it over there on the right-hand side. It's over, over on the right there, if you can drag it over. Um, anyway, so, um, and I have checked with all the people. We sent out a letter um, asking people if they'd like to be on the committee. A couple of people said they couldn't be for various reasons. Um, and I'm not sure what's happening there. That's not. <laughs> so a way to get that. There we go. Yeah, perfect. Um, That's I, that's I have Dustin's uh, email now. Dustin is um, the son of um, the elder Kupex who have said they want their son to represent them. Um, Mary is on the Lake Loyola Committee, the Conservation Commission, which felt they should be on, um, in, you know, represented as well. Doug and Howie Kinder are the assistant, and well, the, the dam keeper and the assistant dam keeper. I'm me, obviously. Glenn Stockton is. Um, is an abutter, as is Ryan Zephyr, who however says his last name. Excuse me, Ryan, I just don't know how to do it. Um, anyway, so all those people, uh, there are a couple people we talked to. Um, one of them was um, Kat Hilton, who couldn't do it. Um, and I think there's somebody else who couldn't do it. I can't remember now, to be honest. But anyway, this seems like a pretty good committee. Um, Oh, I know. The problem is um, the you'll notice the idea is we try to do all this over a couple of weeks, starting in a couple of weeks, over a few weeks. We sort of meet every other week and get it done with. But I think we're going to have to spread that out because Glenn is actually going to be gone for a while. He's in the butter. I think he's going to be important, an important player. So I think we'll have our first meeting. I think it's on the 16th. We'll schedule it and of November. And then we'll have to try to schedule a couple. If you go to the right there, Becky, you can see when he's he's not there. I can't I have it right in front of me, but uh, yeah, he's out of town the 28th to the 12th. So he's out for out of town for a while, three weeks or so. Um, but I think that's okay. I don't think there's any super big rush. I don't think anything's gonna happen. Nobody's gonna be jumping in the water to go swimming in the middle of January. <laughs> so I don't think we have to worry right away. And I think we'll probably have to prepare something for A, the select board, and I suspect as well to the town meeting. Um, first of all, it may cost money to do, if we decide that we should be building a fence or something like that, that'll cost money. It'll cost money if we do the buying of the land and or it'll probably cost money even for a um, an easement on the land. Um, so there'll be some money things that we probably have to be, will be concerned, of, will be a concern of the town meeting, I'm sure, and the finance meeting and so forth. Anyway, that's it. Okay, so on the list, Eric, um, Becky, if you could just um, scroll back to the, or put, maybe put the list back up. Uh, so everybody who is on that list agreed to serve on the committee? Yes, that's um, the list. I'm sorry, Becky. Bec the charge, did you want to review the charge? Oh, yes, the charge, and we, and we thought we should have a charge for the committee. Yes, that's, thank you very much, yeah. I just wrote up something, two two words, two sentences rather from our, um, it was really to lift it off the letter we had to send to people. Um, Sorry, my... It's not a perfect science. No. <laughs> not yet anyway. It's just, it keeps coming in really small. I'm not sure. Try to increase it. Maybe it's um, minimized. Um, I think maximize it, maybe. Can you read it to us, Becky? Can you see it now? Hey, it's very blurry. Oh, that's not it. Um, there you go. Try it now. It's, it's, um, Eric, do you want to read it? There you oh, go. There it is. Oh, there yep. it is. I was going to say, I can. I'm sorry, it was writing. It. Right. Um, there, there it is. You can read it, or I can read it to you, or any way do you want to do it. People need it bigger. No, it's good. Okay. So the idea would be that, that would be th those are the things that we um, I change it to mid January that we'd have to report back to select board by. 
Um, I was a more ambitious in an earlier version of this charge, but I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. Do you, um, do we need to vote on the charge? Yeah. Okay. I'd say we want to vote on the charge and then unvote on the appointments. Vote that's on the I'd, appointments. Okay. Yeah, that's how I would say we want to do it. Yep. Yeah. All right. So that looks good to me. I think that's what we had discussed at a previous meeting. Um, um, Melissa, any comments? No, I think it edits? looks good. No, I think um, it looks good. Becky? I, Eric, I was just wondering, you might want to just say the end of January because you won't be able to have your second meeting until January. Right, that's fine. That, I, I have no problem with that change if you want. Um, I guess I'll have to make that. Who makes I that think, change? I, I think, think I you can. Make, oh, there you go, look at that. If that's all right, if everybody's yeah, okay. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, by the end of January, by the end, there should be a V, I guess, in front of it. Okay. By the end of January. That's a little, that's fairly vague. And as I say this, I, I don't think anybody's going to be diving in the pond to go swimming in January. So it's probably not going to make any <laughs> no, difference. It'll be ice fishing at that point. <laughs> that's true. Well, yeah, Maybe. right. <laughs> I'm not too worried about the ice fishermen causing any damage there, but they might, I suppose. And um, before we vote on the charge, I just want to make sure, um, because this has come up previously. So this is a subcommittee of the select board, is that correct? Yes. That's how we decided to do it. Yeah, I think that's how we decided to do it. And um, and the meetings will be posted? Yes. Yes. Okay. I think they're, I mean, my sense is they're, and Becky, you can correct me, but I believe they're posted as select board meetings, right? Or, or not, are they? Uh, well, we post them as, it'll be look like that. Lake Wyola subcommittee. Okay, that's, that's fine. And, but you'll find the postings on their home will be on the select board, but there's a separate category for subcommittees. Okay. So if another, if another member of this select board came to a meeting, then it's not, it's a, it's a legal meeting, correct? Could they participate? Just trying to recall what the open meeting law Rules I think that's true. Yeah, they could participate without um, because it's because it's a select Already board meeting, po posted the subcommittee um, and that prior subcommittee, we had two select board members of the committee. OK, and that was fine. This is like if Melissa or I wanted to go um, to one of the meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe should like we, the chair of the we, committee. Since we're talking about open meetings, should we just make a little note here that this this committee of Abides by the open meeting law or something of that nature? Or no, in the charge? All committees have to, though. I mean, no, we, we know, we know, we know that. But does, does anybody, does the people that are coming into it, will they know that? That's, you know, do we want they to just know that? It, it did say that in the letter, in the, in the letter okay, asking them as they wanted it to do somewhere. it. It did as say that it, it would somewhere. be an open meeting law. And I think people understand oh, that. Open yeah. yeah. And they have to come and get sworn in with the town clerk who refreshes their memory on a, or gives education on open meeting law if they haven't served on a committee or board before. Okay, um, I'll, talk, I'll talk to you about that after and when to do that, how to set that up. Um, they just come in and she, I mean, they, the, the members contact the town clerk and she, you know, come in ahead of your first meeting. Right. I think some of these people live out of town, though, because the, the fact that their Zoom meetings was very useful to them. Um, but they may, they may, I don't know, we'll figure that out. We'll just have to figure that out. Good point. Uh, I don't know if swearing in on Zoom is legal. I don't know either. Well, you know, we may find that. Yeah. I mean, we may have to have the first meeting. Might have to be a live meeting, and then and then if, yeah, that's fine too with me. Um, whatever, whatever works. You might have to change your date, though. Uh, I think it was eleven sixteen. Yeah. All right, we'll figure. We'll, uh, we'll figure this out. We have to do this now. Okay. Um, so, do I hear a motion to approve the charge of the Lake Wyola Subcommittee of the Select Board? 
I will make the motion. So moved. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Make peace, O'Neill, aye. Stalker, aye. Farrell, aye. Okay, so now we have the, um, the study committee. Um, I know we've done this before. Can we do this en masse um, appointments? I don't see why not. I think we can. Looking to yes. Becky. Yes. Okay. All right. Sorry, okay. everybody had a good answer, so I was. Yeah, right. I just didn't want to uh, All right. do anything out of line here. Um, Sorry, does, uh, Melissa or Eric, do you need to see the list of names again? Eric, I know you're familiar with them. Melissa, do you need to see the list of names? Um, it might be helpful real quick if I was to make okay. a motion, unless the Eric wants to make the motion and then I'll just second since he knows the from more familiar with the names you want me to read the read the, um, yeah. the names okay um the committee would include kristen burgess dustin kupek mary david howie kinder john kinder myself glenn stockton and ryan zahu zahu whoever you say his name <laughs> sorry i'm really butchering his name probably zahu 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 or Here something like that Zero hua. Okay. Zero hua. So a motion's been made. Um, I'll second. Second. Okay. For the previous list, which I won't repeat all the names again, to be um, appointed to the Lake Wyola Dam Study Committee. Um, any further discussion? All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Make peace, O'Neill, aye. Stalker, aye. Errol, I. Um, thanks, Eric, for all your um, work on this. And I know Geneva and getting stuff out to everybody. Um, really appreciate that. And uh, so you said the first meeting will be next week? The That's 16th. the plan. 16th. The 16th, yeah. November. We'll have to figure out a post. I'll figure out a post out or Geneva or Becky or somebody will have to figure that out how to post yeah, it. We just need to verify that. Uh, if it needs to be in person, if people can get there. Yeah. We can move ahead on that date, but if you can, um, I'm just not okay, I'm yeah. confident that, you know, everybody could get there. Oh, and that everybody could get sworn in before the first meeting too. Right. Okay. Right. Um, all right. Well, keep us posted. All right. We'll figure that out. We'll, I'll I, talk mean, to I reached you. out to Grace to ask her um, if people can be sworn in through zoom okay we'll, we'll figure it out oh okay. geneva you might know the answer to that question they can't you're muted no i don't think so but i'm not 100 percent sure okay yeah all right all right so we'll have to figure that one out i mean if they live like out of state, I don't know how we're gonna. No, no, I think I believe Dustin lives in Westfield or something. Okay. Um, and sure. he may be the only person actually. I'm not even sure. Roger, Ryan lives out of state. I mean, out of the area. I think, but I yes, think it's he like does. Lundo. I think. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, we'll, we'll just, yeah, that's a. Oh, that's Grace just right? said no. Just like. I'm raised it. No, people cannot be sworn in. So, Janine okay. and Grace agree. Okay. Um, well, we'll have, we'll have to think about this and how to pull this off. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Well, thank you again for um, pulling that together. It's something that's been out there for a while. It'd be great to have some guidance from that well, group yeah. of people. Hopefully, we'll be able to figure this out in a way that's a good way to figure it out. That's the plan. Um, all right, the next item on the agenda is the um, right of first refusal um, for the Greenbaum property. And I know we talked about this at the last meeting. Um, and Becky, do you wanna just give us an, an update on kind of where we stand with the other committees that have to give input on um, 
whether or not the town exercises its right of first refusal. So um, the information originally went to everyone's um, mail and then um, Carrie emailed out to ConCom when she received it, but there was a misunderstanding and the chair thought it was um, for the select board, not for ConCom. And so anyway, they have that on their agenda for tomorrow night, I believe it is, yeah, the 10th. And we'll be discussing whether to recommend for, um, for the town to inquire about purchase or not. And then the planning board, while Jeff gave us the update that they are aware of the property through their previous um, land split um, that, that was handled over the summer, they have not discussed that as a committee and it's on their agenda um, for Monday. Um, the 14th. So the two committees interested in responding, while they don't, um, they have not identified the parcel as being one of environmental importance. It didn't show up uh, in the open space plan uh, as being an important parcel for the town to pursue purchase of. Um, it, the, uh, we have two committees that will be addressing the issue um, in the coming week or after this meeting. So given that information, it's up to the select board uh, to decide whether you want to move ahead on a decision without their input or wait to the 22nd at your next meeting to give your input. I mean, to give a, hear their input and then make your decision. Uh, Eric, comments. My only sense, my sense would be they should wait. We they should be allowed to weigh in. That's what they. That I I think they probably probably both would say go for it, do whatever you want. But I think we should confirm that. Um, Melissa, mm -hmm. you agree? Yeah. Okay. Well. Um, I see the owner is here um, and uh, I don't know, Hilda, if you wanted to say anything, but it looks like- I just you know, have we... a question. This, is, this, this has been a problem for a while and you guys have to be, have the money to match the offer. And I don't see what waiting for the other committees to weigh in on this if you don't have the money to match the offer and so if you know you don't have the money can't you decide now or do you think you're going to come up with the money someplace and that's putting it quite frankly because this has been going on and on and on and on now for a couple of summers and issues with people in Shootsbury not sending me tax bills for no for February and March Oh, excuse me, February and May, I ain't got a tax bill yet. Well, I don't know I've anything about land, that. I've owned the land for 50 years and, uh, and you know, I'm getting old now and I don't, I won't need it much longer. And we've been, my husband bought a house in Shootsbury in 1959. So it's not that we're newcomers to town, but I mean, I, yeah, I think you guys need to have a discussion of whether you can afford to buy it if you, you know, have that money sitting around somewhere or, or you know, it seems to me like that money might have to come out of the library fund or who knows what. If you don't have the money to buy it, can't you make the decision? Well, legally we, um, you know, the letter was sent to the Conservation Commission and to the Planning Board as, as required by law when a property is being taken out of, I don't know if it's 61 or 61A. And- 61B. It's recreation land, which recreation. means it would run out. It's going to run out on its own anyway by June. Right. So um, the town has the right to review this and then decide um, whether or not it wants to exercise its right of first refusal. And um, we, you know, I believe we as a um, as a select board have an obligation to um, to hear from our other town town boards. And I don't know anything about the reason why you haven't gotten any tax bills that is not related to it's not your issue. It's it's the the issue with the assessor. 
because yeah. the collector knew all about the, the uh, parcel was split a year ago, more than a year ago. And, and the collector knew about it, but the assessor refused to divide the parcel up. Well, we can we can follow up with that, as I said. It's is a, been followed up. It's been squared away. OK, we, good. Thank you for letting us know. Um, OK, so um, uh, do we we need a, a vote to continue this to our next meeting and we um, await um, word from the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board? So do I hear a motion to that effect? I make a motion that we continue this um, this discussion to the next meeting until we hear from the other two boards. I think you'll have a vote that night. Is there a second? Second. Okay. okay. Any further discussion for the select board? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Make peace, O'Neill. Aye. Stalker, aye. Farrell, aye. And Becky, would you make sure that this is on the agenda for the? already um it's already on it was the first okay. item put on okay um all right so um the next item is the community compact best practices grant and that's a vote becky you have that here it comes Okay, so it's um, it's a regular state grant. So we have the the normal state language, uh, with for Rita's signature, and then we have the grant agreement. Um, this was written up. Um, okay, so this is between the state and between the town of Shutesbury, although the. Um, all the work for the grant was done um, by the Collins Center and um, Jen Colkeen, our, ele our um, elementary union superintendent. Um, so, so can you just stop? Don't scroll down anymore. I think we had we had discussed this at our I don't know if it was our last meeting or meeting before that. Um, Right, so it's a regional, it's a regional grant. Shootsbury is the lead applicant on behalf of um, other communities within Union 28. And um, what's section one describes what the um, it's it's basically to look at whether or not there are efficiencies and way to save money or operational efficiencies um, within the within the union. So we're just, we're the lead, um, but in the Collins Center, which is located at UMass would be the, um, is the contractor, correct? Yes, uh, they've prepared the grant. That's why they were able to get it. Uh, the grant accepted overnight, and this is the resulting contract that okay. needs to be signed by the select board, accepted and signed. The money doesn't, it just passes through Shootsbury, but goes to the Collins Center? Yes. Okay. Um, are there any questions? I think it's okay. Yeah, this was the one that where Jen was here and talked to us about it. Um, Melissa, do you have any questions? No, I don't have any questions. Okay. All right, so do I hear a motion to approve the Community Compact Best Practices Grant for FY23? So moved. So Second. Moved. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Um, all right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Make peace, O'Neill, aye. Stalker, aye. Farrell, aye. And so that just needs my signature, Becky? Yes. Okay. One in the morning. Um, all right, so town administrator updates, unless there's nothing else that was 
unanticipated. Is that correct? No, not today. Um, and so first of all, uh, I, I was telling you about our senior exemption that we put through to the legislator was approved by the Senate um, at the last meeting. I think I announced that. Um, and then on Monday, um, it's Wednesday now, on Monday, the governor did sign, um, sign off on it. So it is approved and it's final. Um, I am reaching out to another community who's accepted it um, to help me um, make sure that the notes I have on procedures are complete um, so we can get that information out to the public. Uh, Leslie Bracebridge has been uh, working on that um, as well. And so we're, we're excited that it finally passed. Um, we're trying to outline the timing uh, and how it works. We know there's gonna be a select board vote on the percentage amount um, that will be offered to the community. Um, but be, before that happens, we need to do the calculations so that you, before you vote, have an understanding of the financial impact it will have. Um, as you probably all recall, the taxes are, are raised um, to cover the grant amount and spread over the entire community. So even people um, that receive a grant will have this slight increment into their taxes just uh, along with everyone else. So that's um, a project that we hope to get to next week and um, get the information out to people. Um, okay, can I ask you a question just because I don't recall. So what what happens is there some, is it is there some asset test or so um the test is you have to be eligible for the senior exemption on your income. oh that's right okay so if you don't qualify for the senior exemption on your income taxes you don't qualify okay. but this is a something above and beyond the senior exemption like Yes, that's a, it's a circuit breaker, I think, I believe it's called on the income tax. Okay, Les, did you have a um, comment? Yeah, I was just going to clarify, it is referred to as a senior uh, circuit breaker. Okay, great, thanks. And, and, some, and, and the additional cost or kind of loss in tax revenue is then absorbed by the rest of the taxpayers and, and shoots very, okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So what would the vote, what, what would we have to vote? You determine how much, um, how much of a tax break there's a maximum. And so okay. you determine whether it's better for the town, maybe to start at a 25% level or 50% level of that or, um, or a hundred percent. So that's why you need the financial information so you can, you know, you don't want to just vote not knowing the impact, I would assume. And when when do you anticipate that might be? Hopefully at the next meeting. Okay. So it'd be really good if if there was some way to just sort of refresh our, you know, background information, refresh our memories, because this has been yeah. <laughs> Ideally we would have Kevin come and give us a refresher, yeah. but he wrote something though, didn't he? There must be something. It was in the newsletter, uh, the senior, the Gazette, I mean, Gazette. Gazette. Yep. But I can send you out the what he sent to the select board um, two years ago before yeah. we put it on the warrant. Okay, that so would be great. Send yeah. That back out. yeah. Okay. Any other questions about that? Okay. Um, the HVAC system um, is close to being finished at the elementary school. Um, the, the problem this week, in contrast to the week before when there was no heat was it was 80, degree, 80 degrees, please turn off the heat. So um, we've had a bit of a bumpy start, but the systems do appear to be working well at this point. Um, there, the asphalt roof, we will be having the 
first exploration work done by the contractor, Gale Associates. The engineers will be coming out next week uh, and the, working with a roofing contractor to do the exploration and um, which will be the basis of um, their first step and most of the work to come. So that's, so that's done. That's done before like the full, um, the full scope is written, right? This is kind of the preliminary analysis, and then there'll be a full scope for the um, roof replacement. Um, that will probably that will be the next. First, they're identifying all the problems so mm -hmm. that we can have a complete scope when we move right. forward. But this is the initial step, and then the full design process will be based on that exploration. Okay. And we'll follow. Can I, we'll follow. Can I just ask, when we get to the, that design process, can we um, re ask that the roof be able to hold the weight of solar panels? Will that, can that be part of that analysis? If we wanted to do that? Um. I'm sure we could ask for that, but um, you also want to, the school has not been recommended as a current site for solar um, because the trees that are not owned by the town are uh, encroaching upon the roof quite a bit. And in fact, that has been identified as one of the major issues of why the leaking potentially has occurred because there's no, the roof never dries. There's moss growing on the asphalt roof. So I, you know, I think a full analysis of whether it would be a site for solar would have, should be well, done. Yeah, sure, absolutely. But I, from what I'm, you know, it's been taken off the list of solar sites at this point because of those, and because of the trees and the shading, you know, if you don't have maximum shading, you're wasting your money because there's other sites in town and other places that you know we could put solar that would have maximum um, right. maximum solar but I'll keep that in mind just um, flat roofs are always inviting or you know I mean I know they, that's not flat roof but big roofs big roofs are inviting for solar and they have they're inviting and no if there's an issue with it I yeah it's a it's, it's, it's complication I just think we should put it in the toss it into the uh, equation that's all okay um the assessors have been um becky but you didn't give the good news about the school roof oh my <laughs> goodness i, know. I, I was <laughs> waiting for that, that one. <laughs> for those who didn't hear um joe comiford also i believe on monday no friday on friday emailed the town alerting us to the fact that she had been successful in her attempt to earmark $200,000 for the town for the school roof. So we've got a running start between that money and the ARPA money, uh, which is wonderful. Thank you, Rita. <laughs> <laughs> Dwelling on the negatives, I guess. <laughs> Um, yesterday's election was um, ran very smoothly. I just want to thank all the volunteers and commend uh, Grace Spanish for her excellent leadership. Um, it, over a thousand people came to, through town hall. I think it was a thousand fifty four, but I don't have the final number. Thousand fifty eight. I uh, she called me last night at quarter after seven. He did some extra counters. <laughs> So, so uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's I, my first time. Excellent. But to jump in last minute, I have to commend you because I don't want to fess up, but she called me and I said no. <laughs> well, I I I pondered it and I'm like, well, you know, I've never done it before. Why not? That's great. I'm so there happy. Thanks, she Melissa. People just jumped in and I was I, I just got home. I was in, just starting to cook dinner and I hadn't, my husband had been away for a week. And so I said, no, but I regretted it all night. So <laughs> thank you for taking- If anyone gets a job. chance to at least do it once, just yes. to, you know, just say I've participated in the full process from yeah. voting to counting. <laughs> yes, it's a wonderful thing. And thank you. It, it, it is fun. I've done it. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. I've done it too. Yeah. yeah. I have done it too. I've been drafted last minute usually. Um, okay, and 
Let's see, the next thing on the list, the Finance Committee will be receiving their first two budgets on the 15th, next Tuesday. Uh, it'll be a review of the police budget and the highway budget. Um, the guardrail committee that had been formed at the region has completed its work um, rather abruptly. Uh, the report from AJ and Bob at the prior meeting was the towns do not seem to be interested in the guardrail and the guardrail does not seem um, to have um, a benefit that's clearly uh, understood because it leaves, there's always gonna be winners and losers as a result of the guardrail. It basically takes money from some and gives to others. And depending on who at one point might be, oh, you know, if the percent goes up above 4%, if the assessment goes above 4%. Um, so the other towns end up like Shootsbury last year, we were the ones we had, you know, we had to pay more while another town paid less. Um, so that that's the way it works. Um, we are not clear what the administration and school committee are going to do about it moving forward. Um, there might be a request to make an amendment to the regional agreement, but we haven't heard yet. And then the final finance committee thing is that there's a they have concerns about the track and field project um, and with it, you know, how that's going to move forward. I think their fundraising for the project was supposed to be done in January. Um, we have not yet heard what the, you know, how much fu um, fundraising has been done. And if it's not sufficient, I think they're gonna switch which project and they might not move ahead with the artificial turf if they don't have the funding. So there's a lot of unknown still about the field and track and the finance committee, when they get a handle on it, want to meet with the select board about it. So that'll be upcoming. Um, and we haven't heard anything yet about whether or not they were gonna submit for community preservation money, because that was that was sort of part of their plan, and that process starts in in December. So maybe it will all we'll we'll know by then. Yeah, it's all coming up. Um, the personnel board is reviewing the fighter fire um, wage rates uh, at the request of the fire chief. Um, so that's happening. We've got. I'm sorry, going backwards. Got that, the asphalt roof, the senior, um, I started with the senior. Oh, the EMPG grant, that's, that's the emergency management annual grant that we get from the state. We have um, the emails for that, I guess had been going to Lenny. I hadn't seen any, but today they got forwarded uh, to me, and I forward it to the uh, to Kristen, our police chief, who is going to step in for emergency management, and she has jumped on it. And um, we think, despite the fact that the deadline for the application is November thirtieth, we think we'll have all the pieces together. Our goal is to bring it to the select board on November twenty second. Um, so that's that update. And I think that's every, oh, the designer RFQ for the library is also out and, and um, will be due back on the 22nd. We have gotten over 24 inquiries and sent out bids to 24 design firms. Um, some of them might just be informational like um, um, Construction Weekly. But we've had 24 inquiries, and I think I believe at least 20 are from architects. So we'll be expecting those results back in, and then they will go to the library building committee, and they will be processing them, um, and hope to have um, a conclusion by the middle of January. Jackie, that, what was the deadline on? Um, when did the deadline for the inquiries? Um, the 22nd. 
a couple of days before Thanksgiving. Okay, and those are all of my updates. Okay, so I just wanted to, um, since we had a um, like an abbreviated agenda for tonight, I'm expecting that our next agenda will, will be, we'll have more stuff. And one thing I just wanted to make sure we um, covered is uh, an update on lot 032 at our next meeting. I don't know how much there'll be, but I think it's just good for us to be um, checking in as a committee as to what the status is with um, the wetlands delineation and the other um, kind of permitting issues for, um, for lotto 32. So if you could put that on the agenda, yep. that would be great. Um, I know you had a few other things already. Can you just, um, is there anything else that? The classification hearing? Okay. I believe, um, it should be, it might, we might have to postpone it to the following meeting if not all the pieces are together. Currently, uh, Roy and Jeff Quackenbush um, <clears throat> are working through all the required um, assessor forms for on Gateway for the recap. The LA4 form, I believe, was done today, and LA13, LA3 are coming up uh, in the next couple of days. So um, if everything, and then we should be entering the recertification um, posting, which will be, it'll be posted, all the values, all the new values will be posted on the website for a week. And I will try to get an estimate on the tax rate uh, for that time uh, for people to know um, what the offsetting and the tax rate, we expect quite a large drop in the tax rate as a result of this over 20% increase in values. That's town-wide, town on like town-wide 20%, but individual properties will be, there'll be variation. Yeah, okay. they'll vary. Um, but it'll, just briefly looking through them, they do seem they all are pretty significant. Some are higher than, and some are lower for maybe other factors or neighborhoods and things like that. But um, it's going to be spread across town. Okay. All right. Great. Um, Melissa, Eric, anything else that um, you can think of that we need to? Oops, Melissa, you're muted. I didn't know if you were. No. Okay. No, I, I don't. I can't think of anything. <laughs> Sorry <yet>. about that. <laughs> um, okay. Great. All right. So if there's no other business. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Make peace, O'Neill. Aye. Stalker, aye. Errol, aye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. A couple of weeks. Okay. Bye. Bye.